Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a decorative axe handle. This is going to be beautiful. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. Going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. In part one, we saw how to easily measure the circumference of our handle. Well, in this situation, it's round. So really, I could just take diameter times pi, 3.14. That's going to tell me my circumference. But in all honesty, it is so easy to just wrap a piece of lace around this and measure that. Now, one big point. I want to use exactly the same weight leather that I'm going to use for my handle so I get a perfect meet. Now, another point here. This handle is just right for my hand, so I don't really want to bump that up. We're going to go with a four to five ounce Weaver Select Natural Veg. Love this because we're going to stamp it. But also, if we've got a larger hand, smaller handle, let's bump that weight up a little bit. Let's make this axe comfortable to the size of our hand. So with this, I've got a pattern here. We're going to go four and three eighths inch or 11.11 centimeters for our circumference. On our length, we're going to go seven and three quarters or right about 19.68 centimeters. That's going to be just right. Now, we've got some grooves in here. We'll talk about those. Those actually can help us out, and we'll talk about that here shortly. But on our design, so right here, we've got all kinds of options. These are from our stamp series. Absolutely love the flared cross, or I typically call that the Crusader cross. We've got our hourglass stamp, and then one of my favorite geometrics. Well, to me, that's a little busy. I love the basket weave. In fact, if we do that on an angle, that's going to look good. Now, it's a period piece. Basket weave doesn't really fit in. Well, actually, once we start to work this into a design, the basket weave disappears. The design starts to pop. Now, right here, yet again, I want to go as far as I can. But I don't want to turn my axe handle into a yard sale, right, with everything we know how to do on one project. But that would certainly be cool, wouldn't it? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's go with this design. Yeah, there we go. These are the tools we're going to need. Now, big point. We don't have to do this. If we just have one stamp tool, we can create something very cool. But right here, we've got a cedar. We've got our geometric. We've got our circle burst and then a flower center. So again, we don't have to go this far, but I've got the tools. Let's use them. Okay, so right here, I've got a piece of leather cased, ready to go. Let's jump over to our punch table, start dropping in our design. First rule here, let's have fun with it. That's the biggest point. Now, this stamp, this geometric, again, one of my favorites, very easy to get this to line up. In fact, this test piece was simply done freehand. Well, let's make sure this lines up for us, but it's super easy to do. So what I've done is I've measured the head of this stamp. It's 5 8 inch by 5 8 inch, or 1.58 by 1.58 centimeters. So on my pattern here, I've just dropped in a grid work, 5 8 by 5 8 Now, we're just going to mark on the outside, and then we're going to literally scribe this pattern into our leather. We're going to overstamp that. We'll never see that, but it's going to keep this very clean and straight. So let's start right here. There we go. Now, with this, I'm simply going to make a small mark in each of the circled areas or cross grids. Good. And we can see those. Very nice. Now, we could put a border on this, but it, in all honesty, I just don't think a border in a camo would look good. Let's just leave this edge like it is. So now, let's take our square and our awl, and let's just lightly scribe in lines to create our grid. And one more. Good, I got a little overzealous on one of these, but we're going to dye in black, and black cures all ills. So I think we're going to be all right there. Now with our stamp, let's start right on our center line, right in the middle. I'm going to drop that in. Let's take our time, make sure we get this lined up just right. Okay, good stamp. Now let's work our way out from here, and we can keep the wings of the tool right on our guidelines. There we go. Yeah, let's take a little extra time to get that just right. Okay, let's finish this line. Oh, 
Okay, that looks good thus far. I'm going to work my way north and south. Okay, well, I like that design. Now, mistakes, well, absolutely. Right here, I'm a little heavy-handed with my stamp. Over here, somewhere in here, my lines, a little bit further apart than five-eighths of an inch. No one is ever going to see that. Now, we will, absolutely. Okay, so let's jump over to a cedar. Just about any cedar here. What I'm going to do is drop this right in the center of our geometric. Well, there we go. So now we've got a good bit done. We can actually see the difference between the two. I like that. It really fills in that geometric. Okay, let's finish this out. Looking good thus far. Like this design. Now remember, we can always re-wet our leather. We just don't want to re-wet it repeatedly or our stamps are going to back back out. Okay, let's jump over to our circle burst. Now, we're going to lay in our spots, offset. That's going to be a good look. So what we've got to do here is pay absolute attention. I don't know how many times I've messed this up. But what we're going to do, let's start right here. Okay. And jump up here. And then back. Very good. That is looking good and nice design. Now, we're going to drop in our spots where we put in our circle burst. That's leaving this area open. Now, we could, like here, go with one of our flower centers. Well, it looks okay. Actually, in this situation, I think I might just leave that open. I like the circular design that emerges when we stack this stamp. It's a cool look, but it's not too busy. So, all right, let's let this dry. About 12 hours overnight. Let all of that moisture dry out. Then we're going to work on our edges. We've given our panel plenty of dry time, overnight in fact, and it feels dry to the touch. We're going to bevel and groove our edges. But before we do that, when we stamp or we tool leather, it's going to expand. We're literally pushing that leather out. So let's drop our pattern back on this. Now widthwise, just a sliver. I'm not going to worry about that. But lengthwise, I need to trim about an eighth of an inch off either end. So we're just going to eyeball this. There we go, right there. But new blade, sharp blade every time, and we'll get a good clean cut. That looks good. Now, if we need to trim widthwise, we've got a good half inch from the point out. So if we trim a sixteenth of an inch off one side or the other, we'll never see that this is offset. So let's drop that back in. Perfect. There we go. Okay. So with our groover, let's add a groove line. Let's add one to all four sides. And I'm going to set my groover at one eighth of an inch. Okay. That looks good. Now on our edger, we're going to go with the number one master tools, four to five ounce. We can edge both sides, round and slick that. But in this situation, I want this flat against the axe, so I don't want a rolled edge there. So let's just bevel or edge the front or the top grain only. Well, that looks very nice coming together. Let's jump over to our punch table, drop in a chisel line. We're just going to do a simple crossover stitch. Going to look good, easy to do, and relatively period. What I would really like to do is a Mexican basket weave. The reason I bring this up is because at this point we need to make that call. If we're going to lace, we need a round hole. If we're going to sew, we need a chisel hole. Now technically this is a lacing chisel. This is our eighth inch flat. It's my absolute favorite for hand sewing. We can lace with this, but it's a little bit difficult. All right. So with this, on our previous video, we didn't really have a good groove line. So we started off of our leather. Let's see if we can get that a better shot. Yeah. So we took our first tine off of our leather. Well, we don't really need to do that now. We've got an incoming groove line. 
So let's take our, our chisel. I'm going to drop that right on the edge of that incoming groove. There we go. Okay. Well, that looks good already. So I'm going to add another set, and then I'm going to jump over and do two sets on this side. So as always, first time, last hole. Now, where I'm going with this is we need to keep these holes parallel. Again, we talked about that in the previous video. But as we move along, just once in a while, it's not a bad idea to check to see where we are. So I'm going to square to the edge, and it looks like we're almost perfect. Okay, I'm going to do two more sets on both sides. Okay, let's double check this again. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to finish this out. Now we've got our sixes in, so let's jump down to a two. First time, last hole. Look at that. That worked out absolutely perfectly. Okay. Looks good thus far. Let's jump back to our main table, add some dye. With our black dye, we're not worried about streaking. This is going to be beautiful every time. We can always go with a dauber. It'll take a little bit of time, but we can do it. I love our dressing sponges. In fact, I tend to cut these down into smaller pieces to make them go further. But really, if we dip dye, it's fast, it's clean, it's easy, and I don't chew up any daubers or sponges. So I've got my black pro dye here, just in a bin. Now I'm a little bit low, but let's drop this in. And we're done. Let's lay that aside. And on a good dry day, let's give that maybe about five hours dry time. Plenty of dry time and we've got a good rich black. It's going to look even better when we put a top coat on it. Now, color, we don't have to go with black. We can match a belt or a sheath or an entire costume. All kinds of ways we can go with that. Now, a couple of quick notes. So on our pro dye, we definitely need some good ventilation here. But clean up, how easy is this? A cheap funnel and one paper towel. That's all we're out, and we've got dye on nothing but our project. Okay, so we're going to go with a leather balm. Well, we knew that was coming too, right? But it's my favorite, but it's going to give us a low-gloss finish on this. So with this, I typically have two rags. I'm going to apply, I call that a wet rag, and I've got a dry rag, we'll buff this off. So let's add some leather balm, and we're going to go a bit sparingly. And there we go, we've got some good coverage. So let's take our dry rag, give that just a second, let some of that wax sink in. There we go, when it starts to dry, let's just start to buff. Now, it's going to go very flat on us right off the bat, but let's just keep buff buffing and this is going to be gorgeous. Well, there we go. And with the leather balm, no ventilation required. Actually smells good. That looks good. I like that low gloss finish. Okay, so next step, let's jump over to our punch table, add some spots. We have a number of ways we can set spots, from simple craft knife all the way up to the little wonder. Now with that, that's a great tool for both the production shop and the craft shop. But if we don't have one, we're just gonna use a craft knife. Now we might have a little bit of a change in design here. I wish I dropped in a stamp in these open areas because we had talked about setting a spot where we've got our circle burst. Well, let's reverse that. Let's drop our spot in here, and that to me is gonna look pretty good. Now, another way we could go. Say we don't wanna add spots to our body, but we could add a spot into each of these semicircles, top and bottom. That'd be a nice border on that. I almost want to go that way, but let's do this. So we're going to set our spots in the empty areas. I'm going to take my awl. Now we could work with our pattern on this, but it's pretty easy to hit that on the nose. So let's make a small mark. Okay, five steps to setting these. So let's take one of our stamp, uh, one of our spots. Now we're going with the with the flower center spot, quarter of an inch antique nickel. So let's take this, and if we can see this, there we. Yeah, there we go. What I'm going to do is just press my tines in on either side of that. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, next step. And the reason we've got a small pallet simply made of cardboard. 
Now I'm going to take our art knife. We have several blades, but I'm going to go with the longer blade. So let's push through. There we go. We don't want to make an enormous hole there, but let's just push through. Now let's flip our knife. Basically what we're trying to do is mimic the shape of the tines on our spot. Okay, next step, let's take our spot, push that through. Nice, that sinks in there so easily. Let's flip this over. I'm gonna bend my tines back in. And now, last step, on our quartz, let's give that just a tap. I don't wanna hit it hard enough to ding it, but yeah, there we go. So now on the back, I can barely feel those two tines. They've almost circled in on each other. That's a well-set spot. So what I'm going to do, set the balance of the spots in every other circular area. Well, that looks good. Let's see, there we go. Very nice, like that offset look. Okay, let's jump back over to our main table, secure this onto our ax haft. There's a number of ways we can attach our handle. First off, this is going to be a snug fit. We can simply sew this on. We're not going into battle with this. That would be fine. Now, if we want to add a little extra hold to that, we've got our double-sided tape. Maybe five, six bands of this. That actually would be pretty secure. Here's a cool way to go, and I almost want to go this route. But since we have these grooves cut in our handle, if we measure these out, drop in some lighter weight leather, Look at that, that sits right in there. All we have to do is sew that, and that is gonna stay right where it is. So really, I'll told, if we don't wanna damage our handle, that's a good way to go. Now, this is my ax, and we're gonna put this on, and it's gonna be on there for good, because that's gonna look nice. Right, okay, so I'm gonna sand this down. I've got 220 grain sandpaper here, and I've got some blue down here. That's simply the bottom, the bottom side, and I'm going about halfway to the bottom of these bands. So I'm just gonna rough up the, the wood a little bit so it'll take our glue. Well, that should do it. That will take some glue. So we're gonna go with the S18. This is a contact cement. So we're gonna need it both on our panel and on our ax handle if things go south on us. And this does happen. Just speaking from experience, the deglazer will strip that glue right back off. We'll go right back to where we are. Okay, so let's add our contact cement. Let's start with our panel. On this, we're gonna add our glue right to the end here. But along our stitch line, let's come in about a quarter of an inch, give or take, does not have to be exact. There we go, okay, we've got some glue on the back of our panel. Let's do the same thing to our ax. Now here I'm not gonna really worry about my quarter inch spine, so I'm just gonna add glue all the way around from just about an eighth of an inch below our bands right to my glue, or right to my tape. Well, there we go. Now, if we get a little overzealous up here, again, the deglazer will take that off, but if we don't have another piece on top of that glue, typically when it dries, it'll just roll off. So let's give both pieces, let's give these about 10 minutes, let that glue set. Our glue's had time to set. In fact, with contact cement, it's going to appear wet, but it feels dry. That's what we're looking for. Now, we did this with our suede ax. I want my stitch line, there we go, I want my stitch line away from my ax, simply because that's gonna be more smooth, so I want that across my hand. Down here, that's where I want my spots, under my fingers to give me some good grip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ax down, or ax blade down. Now with this, we've got our spots in this. There we go, let's do that. So I can actually see where I need to lay that in and get that good and even. Right there, good. Okay, let's lay that down. Let's jump over to our, to our pattern table and sew this on. 
and get the last of our tape off. Okay, so very cumbersome project to try to secure down. What I've got is I've C-clamped my pony to my table and I've C-clamped my axe to my pony. Makes it relatively stable, more than enough for what we're doing. On our thread, let's go with the Ritza, but we're gonna jump up to the one millimeter. It's gonna be good and visible for us. On our needles, John James number 18. Now we're simply gonna do a crossover. Well, we've got a problem. Black thread on a black project on a black ax. We're not gonna be able to see this no matter what we do, but it's simple enough. So let's start right here. I'm gonna take one needle. I'm going about five times my length, so I've got enough room for a knot. So through our first set of holes, let's bring one needle. Let's equalize that out, okay? Let's take that same needle, come across the top and do that again. Basically, we're adding an extra loop right there. So let's draw that down. Perfect meat, very nice. Now, with our saddler stitch, what we would do is go to the next hole, both needles at the same time, and we'd push those through. Well, let's do this. Let's cross over. There we go. Now let's go with both needles at the same time. It actually helps because coming in from the back on a curve, it's a little hard to find the other hole, but if we have both needles working for us, it's not difficult. So let's pull that through and crank down on that. There we go. All right, let's cross over and both needles through the same set of holes. Yeah, I'll move my hand out of the way, see if that'll help. There we go. Yeah, no, it's not any help at all, right? Black handle. So let's pull that down. There we go. We'll get a better look at this when I finish. Well, that looks good. We have got a perfect match. We'll get a better look at it here in just a minute. So we're down to our last hole. Let's cross over. Let's go through just like we normally would. Okay, but before we pull this tight, let's take one more and I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna wrap around and I'm just gonna take this needle through this side. I'm going to come around and I'm going to do the same thing with this needle from the other side. So basically we're just going to hide our knot. Okay, now let's crank down on that. Good. Let's do our square knot. So right over left, circle around, draw that in. Good. Notice that sinks right up under the edge. Pull that taut. Now left over right, circle around, and same thing. Good and tight, very nice. Now let's pull our thread across our blade. We will never see that knot. Okay, so let's get a good picture of this. Notice that is a gorgeous, clean stitch line. Love the crossover, very period. But notice too, notice how well this meets. Well, that is an absolutely beautiful ax handle. I love that. Look at that stitch line, perfect meat. Love the spots. How cool is that? I gotta say, that is one good looking ax handle. Really pops. Now in hindsight, we changed up our design kind of midstream. I almost wish that I had dropped in one more offset spot on both sides. Well, we know how to back up. We can absolutely do that. But all told, that's a good looking handle. It just needs one thing a little use, make it look absolutely authentic. I hope every axe handle you make is spot on beautiful, comfortable, durable, and I hope you have a great time making it. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.